If you're running Linux on your desktop like me, you might be feeling bad about being left out of the enormous amount of games available in Windows. However, I got around that problem a few years ago by using virtualization, in particular being able to pass through my entire graphics card to a Windows virtual machine running on Linux. Before I set this up, it wasn't clear to me how the resulting setup would look like, so I made this video to show what a working setup looks like in action. The interesting thing is that you literally hand over the entire graphics card to the virtual machine, thus making it inaccessible from the host. This meant that I needed to have something from my Linux host, and the Intel integrated graphics worked really well, as it supported multiple monitors, and Linux support for Intel graphics is fantastic. I then dedicated my NVIDIA graphics card to the virtual machine, which meant that I did not need to install any NVIDIA drivers on Linux. This meant that if a monitor needed to have at least two inputs, with one connected to the integrated graphics card used by Linux, and the other cable connected directly to the Windows VM via the external graphics card, Switching between the Linux host and the Windows VM would really mean switching monitor inputs, and technically G-Sync and FreeSync should work as well. The biggest benefit of virtualizing your gaming setup becomes more obvious with Steam streaming. For those of you who aren't aware, Steam streaming allows you to access your entire gaming library from your TV and stream games from your desktop. I was running it using the Steam Link device, but since that device is discontinued, I'm not running either Windows or Linux, an Android TV, or even a Raspberry Pi can do the job, and you just have to connect it to your TV and a gamepad. I've been using the Xbox controller for Windows, and that works really well. After that, you have your entire Steam gaming library available in your living room. However, one of the general issues with Steam streaming if you're just running plain Windows is whatever is being streamed on the TV has to be mirrored or displayed on the PC monitor as well, rendering the computer completely unusable for any other work if someone happens to be playing a game in the living room. Depending upon how many people you have in the house, this may mean that you would have to dedicate an expensive PC purely for gaming if you don't want your work to be interrupted. However, with Linux and virtualization, this really isn't a problem anymore because the gaming virtual machine is technically running in the background on a different monitor input. If you go to the monitor settings and switch from your external graphics card to your integrated graphics, you then have a perfectly usable Linux desktop and can do whatever you want while the game is being streamed on the TV in the background. You can even dedicate a background VM just for Steam streaming and never actually access it. You can even run other Windows virtual machines that do not use the GPU in parallel if you have a powerful enough rig, thus making the possibility of consolidating your Linux and gaming PC a reality. Of course, real-time streaming requires a decent network. However, I was pleased at how well a Wi-Fi connection performed over 5GHz, although in my case there was a line of sight between the Wi-Fi access point and the client, so I suspect others may not be as lucky. Out of curiosity, I'd also tried the power over Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi, and there's no noticeable difference in performance, although again the client was just a room away. The latency with Steam streaming isn't too bad. Not quite pro gamer level, but decent enough that I don't really notice, and it's very enjoyable playing games designed for a gamepad on a big screen. However, since I mainly game on the PC, I wrote a hacker script that somewhat seamlessly switches to Windows without having to manually switch monitor inputs. It does this with a keyboard shortcut that has X send a sleep signal to the monitor, which causes the monitor to switch to the other available input, and sends a command to Libvirt to transfer control of the keyboard and mouse to the Windows VM. To switch back, the Windows VM has something similar to turn off the screen and then uses an SSH key to turn the screen on in Linux and grab the mouse and keyboard back. All the videos so far were recorded around two years ago, and I've since switched to the red team and started gaming directly on Linux without virtualization on my new machine. This is in the hopes of increasing the minuscule market share that Linux has in gaming, but I've been pretty impressed with the games that run natively on Linux without emulation, such as Dirt Rally, The Rise of Tomb Raider, Mad Max, Rocket League, Civilization, etc. But of course, these games that run natively on Linux are just a drop in the ocean. But Valve has been working on a gaming-focused, Wine-based compatibility layer to bring many Windows games to Linux using a project called Proton. Because of this, the amount of Windows games in my library that started working on Linux was astounding. It uses Vulkan for the rendering, and thus the performance is fantastic. While I haven't run any benchmarks, for day-to-day -day gaming it feels no different from gaming on Windows. However, not all games are supported, and if you're considering using GPU pass-through virtualization like I did before, then there's a much better method now to access your Windows VM rather than having to switch monitor inputs. Have a look at this amazing project called Looking Class, which creates a low-latency video connection between your VM and your Linux desktop. Click on the box for more information. Anyway, I hope this gave some inspiration to Linux users out there, and have fun gaming!